Welcome to another edition of the Brain Discovery Series. Today, I'm going to focus on a novel treatment that I often use to treat headaches post-trauma or post-concussion headaches. This is a treatment that's not commonly utilized by many clinicians because they fail to rec recognize that injury to nerves in the head are a common cause of headaches. Now, I find in my practice that more than 50% of the patients that I treat experience headaches due to injury to the nerves. And there are two nerves that I'm mostly concerned about. And they're, they come in pairs. They're on either side of the head. So the one at the front is called a trigeminal nerve. That nerve has three branches. One involving the lower face, the middle face, and the upper portion of the face. The one that involves the upper portion of the face is the most commonly injured nerve in the head when there is trauma. It's called the trigeminal nerve and the V1 or ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. And it's about this point, right around where the eyebrow begins. That nerve comes out to a notch called a supraorbital notch in the skull as it exits, comes from the brain and exits the skull into the skin. And it supplies the, the forehead and it goes all the way to that little knob at the back of your head, comes around above your ear, it supplies sensation to that area. Generally speaking, patients with this problem would report hyperesthesia, where they feel sensitized when the area is touched or they experience numbness. These are the key features that we use in making the diagnosis for this condition. I will say that this injury is much more common in the front than in the back of the head. As we all know, most of the patients who have a concussion or TBI tend to get injured from the front. And that's the reason why this nerve is so commonly involved in persons with TBI. Now, the novel treatment I'm going to discuss about is called nerve blocks. Simply nerve blocks. Where we introduce a needle with medications, anesthetic and a tiny bit of steroids, and we bathe the nerve with this treatment. Now what you should know about nerves when they're injured. Initially, you may or may not get symptoms, but in many cases, these patients would experience some symptoms days, weeks, months, or even years after the injury. And why is that the case? Nerves, during the healing process, actually secrete certain compounds that introduce, that induces pain in patients. One of those substances is known as substance P, and P for pain, of course, but it's a simple molecule that whenever the nerve starts secreting, it causes a triggering sensation to the nerve, sending certain impulses to the brain that's interpreted as pain. Why is this treatment so effective? The anesthetic utilized and the steroid utilized are effective in modulating the activities of substance P. In addition, what we do know is that the trigeminal nerve is an important nerve involved in triggering migraines. And it's a neurohumoral basis. What I mean by that, the nerves and the immune system becomes involved. Once the trigeminal nerve is stimulated, certain other factors are secreted that causes vascular changes. Hence the reason why people develop migraines whenever that nerve is stimulated. I'm going to pause this moment and introduce you to a patient who has experienced this very type of injury, causing a significant disruption in her life. And I'll also demonstrate how this procedure is performed. This morning, I am welcoming one of my patients, Lauren Chin. 
and we'll talk today about headaches. Mm -hmm. Right, Lauren? Pretty much. All right. So Lauren was a medical student and because of her concussion, had to drop out of medical school. Mm -hmm. And we met how long ago? Two years uh, in, at the end of November. End of November. Yeah. And that was, and your injury occurred how long before that? Uh, my injury occurred in February of 2015. All right, so, wow, so now we have five years out. Yeah, five years. Okay. So in 20, January, end of January 2015, I was riding a bicycle and I flipped over the bicycle and I hit my head, but I was wearing a, a helmet and it kind of, they took me to the ER, did the normal procedures, checked a, if I had brain bleed with a CT, discovered I didn't have it, gave me a week off of school, and then as I graduated towards the end of 2017 from my collegiate career, university career, they, my mom said, hey, let's get an MRI. We got an MRI, discovered that I had um, a scarring in the right parietal lobe of my brain, and they said, oh, that's probably going to be an issue. But <laughs> well, we didn't have enough time to kind of address it. But we got gotten the name of Dr. Ned in advance. So I went to medical school for I think about a year and a half um, before I eventually had to drop out at the end of October 2018 because it had gotten to the point where I was non-functional because I was in so much pain because I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, and I was having eye twitching and the whole gambit of <laughs> nerve pain and headache and migraine pain. Well, so tell me, which part of your head uh, you had the most symptoms? The most symptoms I had was on the right side of my head, and it felt more like a pressure was on the top of my head, and it was kind of just pushing backwards into my head. There's different types of headaches that I had, but that was like mostly the main one with like sharp headaches, which were very incapacitating very quickly because you didn't know when they were coming and that was mm -hmm. just map out the distribution of where your headaches were you want to show so the distribution of my headaches was mostly related to along here and around my eye area where this was having the most twitching and then it kind of just progressed from there where it kind of would be oh that's one type of headache and then it would go all over my head. Sometimes it would just be in the front where my eyes are, and sometimes it'd just be in the back of my head. Now on to the supraorbital or trigeminal nerve block. Uh, step one is to first find the location of the supraorbital notch where the supraorbital nerve exits. The patient is looking straight ahead. You find a spot to where the pupils are located. And you draw a line from the pupil of the eye to the supraorbital ridge. This is the supraorbital ridge. That's the line of the eyebrow. At this point is where the supraorbital notch is located. Step two involves the preparation of the medication. We utilize eight parts of bipivacaine. We draw up in a 5cc syringe, followed by Depomedrol. We use two parts of Depomedrol in setting up the mixture. Step three, we clean the area carefully with alcohol. And step four, we insert the needle for safe and effective way of performing this procedure, we use a 23 gauge needle. We now insert the needle starting in the midline, about an inch above the middle border of the eyebrow. The needle is now advanced at a 45 degree angle towards the medial portion of the eyebrow. This is where the supraorbital notch is located and the supraorbital nerve actually exits. An important safety tip at this point, the needle is inserted up to the halfway point between the insertion point of the needle and the supraorbital notch in order to avoid hitting up against the nerve and damaging the supraorbital nerve. 
The fifth step involves infusion of the medication. The medication is now infused to bathe the nerve until a subcutaneous collection is noted. We insert a total of 1 to 1.5 cc in each supraorbital area. The sixth step, we apply pressure to prevent bleeding. I encourage clinicians out there to ask their patients with chronic migraine if they ever had a concussion or injury to the front of the head. And in many cases, you will find out that they were injured and that nerve was injured. The same goes for the occipital nerve in its trigger of migraines. I perform this procedure in about 50% of my patients with post-concussion or post-TBI headaches. I also perform this procedure in many of my migraine patients. This very effective procedure does not require a lot of training. It can be performed in only six simple steps. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also stay updated with Dr. Ned on his website at concussiontbi.com and on Instagram and Facebook. Thank, Thank you. you.